Alright, let's see... Oh, before we start anything, I... Okay, these are the things that I want to talk about, so... You guys already know everything that I'm about to say. You guys heard about this over and over again, but... These are obviously... Like, just because you know about these, you're not... You guys aren't gonna get better, or anything like that. So... Overlay... Chats... Hmm... Let's cover the basics first. So, as we all know... What are the things that we fucking hear over and over and over again on Reddit? Map awareness, warding, uh, building accordingly, not not like following, just like blindly following a guide. How to... okay, and I'm gonna actually talk about how to learn certain champions. And... Being resourceful, using... Yeah, I don't know, I can just re-upload it through Twitch to YouTube. And being resourceful, using third-party programs such as LulWiki, Timer Apps, Guide sites, and I'm also gonna talk about Lol Nexus, which I highly, highly, highly. Do I hold? Uh, I mean, I guess. No, you know what? Don't use them. Like, <sighs> Lol Nexus is probably one of the sh cancerous things that has uh happened for the League community. And again, having good manners. Ah, oh, okay. I you guys heard this shit over and over again, but. But these are important, like, th th these are important. I'm gonna... Okay, so page 5. Map awareness. What is map- what, what is map awareness? Like, what does it- how does it help you and your team? Well, it provides information around the map and, like, you know what's going on. It's like, you know, okay, like, you don't see if you- for example, you see a jungler at the top. That means, obviously, the jungler won't be here right away at mid lane. So you can be a little more aggressive, you can push your lane, you can do whatever. You can also coordinate a uh, roam, bottom, or uh, taking other objectives such as dragon. I'm actually not going to answer any chat questions for a while. And I'm just gonna lower my music. I like having a little background music on. Alright. So again, I'm just gonna mainly focus on mid lane. So, again, map awareness. Uh, okay, you're looking at your map, and you see your top laner getting destroyed by the Udyr jungle, enemy Udyr jungle. And you are, let's say, you you are Syndra versus uh, Zix. Let's go with Zix. And Zix actually has kind of an advantage. And, uh, and he, he's, um, He's a winning lane, but he, he uh, naturally Zix is a really good lane boy because it's really easy to uh, trade with him. But anyways, you know, you, okay, your H your HP is slightly higher because he's been eating free harass and he's been missing everything. And you know, if you all in him, like you're gonna you're gonna at least like drive into a tower and you're gonna be able to get free harass under tower. But normally you don't want to do that because obviously if your jungler comes while you're pushed to the enemy tower. You're probably gonna die, even if you bust flash. And this is super early on, so chances are uh, you won't have wards, so you won't be able to react in time. So, so those are the things you can do that map awareness can help you with. And another example, your opponent, your lane opponent. I guess this isn't really. Uh, map awareness, and this is just like, just just generally being aware and thinking clearly and uh, thinking about your options. But okay, so your lane opponent uh, recalls. So what I'm what I'm obviously going to do. Let's say I'm level six. I'm an RA level six. I'm pretty damn strong right now. I'm also mobile. So what I'm gonna do when when my lane opponent goes back is push my lane, and just go roam bot lane. Let's end. I mean, it doesn't also have to be bot lane, but I just personally like, or mid laners in general like uh, roaming bot lane because one thing they have two targets, and if your support is a CC bot like Taric, it's gonna it's gonna be really easy to get the kill. So if if their bot lane happens to be pushing up and their ward just died because uh, it's around it's around that awkward time, just go for it. And another thing, being aware, uh, having map awareness helps you live basically 
I mean, MIA calls have MI calls are pretty standard these days, but their MIA calls won't always be there for you, including like even even when we scrim, um when we were scrimming uh, against Quantic, our bot lane didn't call MIA and then and then uh Quantic's bot lane actually came up to mid, roamed up to mid, because they were losing so hard. And like these things can happen anytime, and I, because I wasn't watching my map. Because I was relying on MI calls so much, I just got ganked and took, they just took my tower down. So, there's also that. And... Hmm... Oh yeah, so the jung jungler hasn't ganked any of the lanes. Like, their jungle is enemy Lee Sin. And... And it has... It's around like 4 or 5 minutes. And Lee Sin... I'm pretty sure Lee Sin clears around 3 minute mark. Or at least like the double camp clear. So normally he would they would go... They would start ganking about now. But he hasn't showed up for about two minutes, two f a full two minutes, and you have no idea where he is. Then you want to be careful, even even because Lee Sin has so much raw damage and, and utility and mobility. You want to be careful. You don't. You want to just like. You just want to. Even if you were to miss few CS, that's the chance you want to take. You you don't want to take the chance of getting ganked. And I also talked about using third-party programs so personally i have terrible terrible fucking awful map awareness um but i still look at my map quite often anywhere between anywhere between uh every five seconds every five to 15 seconds i look at my map but that's still awful so and yet i'm challenger somehow and i'm in a team and we're actually moving up so what i actually thought about to help you guys, and this is gonna be incredibly annoying. And I actually turned my goddamn. I shouldn't have restarted my computer because I've I actually saved a lot of things that I want to show you guys. So if you guys Google looping timer, loop timer, uh, and you click on the first thing, it basically sets you a. Con it gives you a control. Uh, I'm too lazy to set up the thing right now, but. Hmm. Hold on, I'm gonna show it to you guys. Add window capture. Temp. Loop counter. Hmm. How do I do this? Oops, fuck. Hold on. Anyways, okay, so if you guys actually search, okay, I'm just gonna give you guys the link. And I'm gonna link all these things on my, on the video page under the information. Okay, so that's the timer, and what I recommend, what I recommend is, uh, set 10 seconds, and just no loop limit, and set. And as soon as, like, as soon as a uh, you set your minion. I mean, it, your minions are and enemy minions are hitting each other. Started every 10 seconds. It's gonna beep. I actually hate the beeping noise. I wish there was another program, or at least I can set up set the sound. I wish it was just like a little mini beep, but it's. You know what? Do 15 seconds. I feel like it's way. The sound is way too annoying to. Bear, every 10 seconds. Okay, so 15 sec. Every 15 seconds, it's gonna beep. And every time it beeps, you guys are gonna look at your map. Uh, you guys might not think that's a lot, but that's... I'm sure you guys won't do that at all. You guys won't do it every 15 seconds. Fuck, I hate that noise. Okay, if you guys like, can find a better program with a better beeping noise, because that's really obnoxious. Okay, it's really obnoxious, so you'll look at it, but it's still really obnoxious. But... Oh. Is my mouse? Oh god, I keeps it keeps doing that. Or your phone, it doesn't matter. Any any way or any way can get a timer on. Like so, set it on 15 seconds. Make sure it's looping, and every time it beeps, you want to check your map. 
it'll save your life a lot. And when I say like look at the map, I don't mean just like look at it for 0 0.1 second. You want to be looking at okay if you see your jungle if you see the jungler, what where your bot lane is and how far your bot lane's pushed. If it's getting pushed into your tower, you want to start roaming. Mm, and things like that. Or if if it's safe to if it's safe to just push out and then farm your wraith and wolves. And that's another way of using your uh, using third party program or app, I guess. You know what I mean. Just be resourceful. Also, this is something Link taught me in CLG. So what he always does, or what he told me to do, is go to Lil Wiki, and there is a list. There's like a list of champions. If you go here, I'll link it to you guys. So. Oh my god, every time I go near the chat, it spazzes out. So, let's say you're against Orianna. Or, maybe not Orianna, because her cooldowns are super low, but... Let's say you are against Kha'Zix. We're gonna click Kha'Zix. We're gonna look at their cooldowns. We're gonna look at their cooldowns and... Okay, so... There's, there's no way that they're gonna uh, max leap, so it's gonna be 22 seconds without any with zero percent cooldown. So which means every time, every time he jumps in, he, even if you do take the take the damage, you're gonna be relatively safe from his all-ins for another good for a good 22 seconds. Of course, if you're like two HP and you're somehow you're for you're still in the middle of your lane for absolutely no reason, he might just slash onto you and still kill you or ignite you, whatever. But Abusing things like this is really helpful, and eventually you don't. Eventually, you don't have to look at them. You memorize all these things. Just memorize all these like big cooldown ones, because they're usually escapes and or like leaps and dashes, so you can make a play out of it. Same thing with flash, but I flashing time. Uh, I am timing flashes and other summoners is really difficult. Even when I scrim with my teammates, it's really hard to keep up with everything. And no, I don't. I don't. I think it's like cheating at all, it's, it's try, you're trying to improve. So this thing I really 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 recommend, like this is one thing I freaking recommend. You don't, have, you're gonna, you don't have to do the timer thing that I t just showed you guys. I really want everyone to do this, it helps you so much. So another way of using third party apps, or uh, third party anything actually, just something, using something that isn't part of League, I guess, directly. Let's see, that's low wiki, timer apps, and guide sites. Okay, guide sites can be helpful, they can be really helpful. It helps you... Hmm, how should I say it? If you read the whole guide, if you read a really, really long guide, and you know you read it like twice or something thoroughly, thor thoroughly uh, you probably save about playing 10, uh, tw at least 15 games, if the guide is actually good. So it saves you a lot of time in learning stuff, and they probably know the optimal builds if they're like trustworthy at all. But not all guys are like that. So the, avail some of the like pretty good guide sites are Solo Mid, Lol King, and Inven. But I'm obviously you guys aren't most of you guys aren't Korean or can read Korean, so I, I guess it doesn't really apply to you. But Inven has a lot of good guides just because there are so many goddamn one trick ponies in Korea. It's ridiculous. I I have nothing. They they play so fucking much. Like they just it it's like one trick uh, being one trick pony in Korea isn't is like completely fine. It's it's nice like that you get you're respected and those are the basics. Another thing I wanted to get in detail a bit was warding. Oh, I also need to find that link. Hold on, I have a really good read that I want you guys to- I mean, you guys can't read it, but I'll summarize it for you guys. Hold on. Using pink words. Obviously, uh, as you guys probably know, pink words changed a lot, or at least quite a bit. And now they, they are now visible and they have 5 HP instead of 3. Alright, so 
I'm just gonna show you guys a picture, open image a new tab. Okay. <sighs> that map, I- Okay, don't ask me what that three piles of rocks are at bottom lane, because I have no idea what that is. Uh, anyway, so... This guy, is, it's a pretty good demonstration of how to use pink boards. One person, only, uh, you can only, it's a broken link. God damn it. Okay. Uh, ignore every, all the stuff that's like written there. Just uh, look at the picture because you guys will understand it. Hold on. Mm. Alright, so for blue side. See the blue numbers? One, two, one, two, three, four, five. One's where uh, it doesn't really matter who puts where, but it's just like wherever you're closer to. These are great defensive wars. Obviously, pink wars are visible, so it's really easy to kill. It's really easy to kill them. I mean, it's relatively easy to kill them. So, but if you use them as defensive wards, they, it's counter jungling is almost impossible unless they're Evelyn or something stupid. Uh, as soon as they come into our jungle, they notice a pink ward, or they don't notice it, and they and they actually come into steal one of our buffs, and we just uh, ev everyone your top laner, your mid laner, and your jungle just uh, go go kill him, gank him, whatever, free kill. Or they notice the pink ward and they have to fall back because there's no way if you place them around the marked areas, they don't have time. They really don't have time to hit hit it five times and leave without. The opponent jungler and uh, your solo laner is just coming to kill you. So those are some great ways to use a pink ward. And they don't really have, they don't, they last forever so it's really good as a defensive ward. And you still use green wards as you would normally. Oh, also, supports please, please buy sidestone. I don't know why people stop buying sidestone, it's so good. But I recommend that you guys save that picture and use it at least once a day. Cause uh, try to if you're playing rank fives, try to do the same thing. To the, try to do where the marks are, or if you're just playing solo queue, to try to coordinate with your other teammates to do it. It it's so helpful. It's so it's so damn helpful. It's so hard to counter jungle with that. It's really safe. Oh god, it's a cursor. I can't, I can't even put my fucking... Okay, hold on. Anyways. <clears throat> what else? <clears throat> Let me... Warding. Oh yeah. Every time you go back, at least for mid later, um, make sure you have enough money to at least purchase one ward. Say, for example, you have 860 gold on your first back. You should probably, instead of, okay, you can just buy a Blasting Wand, right? You can get your Death Cap faster or whatever faster. But you should honestly just get Dor one Doran's Ring, Boots, and a Ward, and a Potion if you can afford it. Potions are always good too, but you should you should always, always get at least one Ward. Especially if you don't have Flash. Unless you're just gonna farm your jungle as mid laner and gimp both yourself and your jungle. Uh, if you don't have flash or a reliable dash to get away, you should really, really, really uh, postpone your core and purchase some wards. And I actually want to... Okay, so the ward placements actually depends. I'm just gonna show you guys quickly. I'm gonna show you guys uh, places to ward, or effective places to ward. You know, of course, you don't have to ward them, but it depends on the jungler. Uh, if it's a jungler with a gap closer and my fucking cursor, oh my god! I'll just show you guys once we get into game.
tempting. Who's a pretty popular jungle these days? Okay. Don't you trust me? Elise is probably okay, so I'm here, I'm leaning. Elise is probably gonna come from this way, this way, or this way, this way. Uh, unless it's someone like Aatrox, Jarvan, Lee Sin, then they can actually try to gank you from here, and I am lagging. Fuck. Unless though, unless it's like champions with a huge gap, or easy gap closers, you don't really have to worry about uh, them ganking from this side. But you still want to ward over he around here. Okay, Jackie fucking loves to do this and it's annoying as hell. If you're playing champions with uh, CC, they might uh, you can you can abuse this with okay. Let's say their Gragas is farming their race and they're gonna come through here, hundred percent. You just stick around here and just charm them and get some free damage off. Like it, they, you won't even get seen because chances are they warded like here, here, or maybe they could have warded these bushes as well, but. If you have time, it's always better to ward uh, these bushes over these two. They're still really helpful, but warding here usually gets the jobs done as well. So you want to ward here. Uh, okay, so sometimes it's way too dangerous to... Uh, th these wards are amazing, because it shows you... You can either ward here or here. Uh, they're both fine in my opinion, but I really like warding here, because you have a lot of time to react and you can also you might be able to see them doing going to red tell your team that their jungler is doing red or they're just doing race and if they make their way over here you want to uh, okay a lot of people do this and i kind of do it as well but it's a really bad habit you just because you see their jungler i'm, I'm okay so I want to kind of fool the enemy jungler. It's like, oh, even though I don't, even though I see you, I'm gonna act like I don't see you, and just like fuck around here until they're. Mm, who's a who's champion with easy CC to land? They're uh, okay. They're Syndra. Suddenly flashes and stuns your ass, and you're like, oh well, fuck, because uh, I wasn't all the way over here. That enemy at least has time to come all the way around here and stun me, and I bust my flash, but she has repel, so it doesn't even fucking matter, and you die. So just if you see them, just just react immediately, just react immediately. And yeah, so that's a really good word. Those two, those are more some of the more aggressive words. Uh, you can also place words. Let's say if you're on blue side, you still want to put words here. Cause uh, if it's if your river's warded, their ju enemy junglers might just come through, take this path, and fuck your bot lane over if the tribush is warded. Even if the tribush is warded, if you see, if your all if your bot lane's all uh pushed out all the way over here, uh seeing them in the tribush through the tribush ward is uh, they're not gonna have enough enough, uh, enough time to react safely at least. So this ward is super safe if you're if you know that their jungler likes to gank a lot. And their opponent is someone like Talon, so they're gonna be ganking a lot as well after level 6. So that's a really good defensive ward against roamers and junglers in general. And uh, this is also a really safe-ish ward. Uh, you want to place them either like here or here, but this place also works because uh, this place is way too risky to... Okay, so you just got back to the lane, and you have no idea where jungler is, and they could be just camping here. Or here, just waiting for someone at least. Probably you, because you know you're gonna you know, you're gonna want to ward. So you just want to ward from this ledge to down here, because it's obviously too risky, right? So it depends on the situation. Hmm. There's also one more ward I wanted to talk about. Oh yeah, for pink wards, I've just kind of used them, but these pink wards should be used defensively. So it gives you a lot of time to, uh, hmm, a, lot, a lot of time to react when your junglers or enemy junglers invade, and try to take those. And I'm still lagging. It's really annoying. That, I think that's it for wards. Just make sure you buy it. I actually buy them so you can place them.
One second. Oh. Okay, I'm just gonna read this because I wrote exactly what I wanted to say. So, and pressing tab. This is pretty straightforward in my opinion, but uh, not a lot of people do this. And Link used to yell at me because I don't press tab often enough. And I always had this build that I follow. Like, no matter what happened, I just... I just built the exact same thing over and over again, even though you should be building flexibly, depending on the situation. Yeah, and the pink wards last until they're destroyed. So, pretty straightforward, you want to press tab as often as you can, and look at what your opponent and allies are buying. Even for something simple as preventing uh, purchasing double Aegis, Aegis of the Legion, something simple like that, you should still... Uh, it, it helps, it, it's just helps a lot. Keep in mind um, that if there are more than three people that has 80 plus MR, you want you want to prioritize voice staff over death cap. A, a lot of people actually don't do this at all. Say your you've been kind of getting your team's been kind of getting owned, and and your opponent team has a shit ton of MR, and you if you and you still are going for a death cap after Athenes is probably a bad idea because uh, I can give you guys a graph if you guys actually really want but they the class 5 did it I think they actually so if three people if more than three people have 80, 80 plus MR it's it's just a lot cost efficient of cost effective to just get void staff instead it's a lot cheaper and yeah it's just it's just a lot cheaper and cost effective and you get the effect sooner since it's a lot, a lot cheaper to build it. Okay, so some people might be thinking, well, I mean, their squishy carries aren't like say their 80 carries aren't gonna have a lot of MR. Like even late game, they're gonna have like 40 MR. So why bother? Well, let's say you're Ari and your main job is to actually kill the carries. Sometimes that's not gonna happen, and you're gonna have to kill their front line with your with your 80 carry or something they're zoning you way too hard so that's actually gonna probably happen quite a often so you want to take account for that and just safely go for void stuff because it's not like you don't do damage with void stuff they'll, they'll probably still die if you hit everything hmm. all right oh um also if you're playing another example, if you're playing Zed, you want to make sure your target doesn't have Zanyas, Quicksilvers, or not 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 necessarily Banshees, but mainly just QSS and Zanyas, because they that they can those two can just kill your damage potential by like a shit ton. Something simple like that. Like I used to get. Baited so goddamn much because I didn't see who had QSS and Vanya, so I just ulted whoever the fuck I thought was fine and got screwed over right away. And hmm. oh yeah, so it's a little again, it's a little hard to remind yourself to press tab every time. So what I recommend is every time you recall, you just hold down tab and see what they have. Or every time your opponent comes back into the lane, uh, press tab and see what they have, all that stuff. Make sure you actually spend your time to actually uh, see what their whole team has and what your what your teammates are getting. Like double Aegis of the Legion happens so often, or used to happen like so goddamn much because uh, supports actually used to get them and junglers did as well. And... Learning the champion. This is something that I'm going to get in detail for a while. And I think you guys are going to like this part if you guys are interested about mid lane. Uh, hmm. So, in my opinion, in my opinion, like Link, if you ask Link, he's just going to say, oh yeah, just, just learn everything, play everything. But it that takes way too long to... That just takes way too much time, and I think the best way to learn mid lane is uh, you should learn four champs for 
one. Okay, so uh, I should probably talk about the playstyles that you can do at mid. I'm sure some of you guys watched the LOL Summer Camp that Korean said, but I'm gonna talk a little about that. So this might be some repeating information. I'm sure you guys heard some of these. So for mid lane, what do you what do you guys need to know is let's see. How and when to pull and push the lane. Um, the type of like you need to find your playstyle as well. Distinct. Uh, I like to kind of categorize them by roaming, poking, and <laughs> season two farmer style. I'm sure you guys know who those champions are. So for example, uh, I'm just gonna list down a few champions for each category. For roaming, there's Ari, TF, Riven, Cassidan, Nidalee. For poking, there's like Xerath, Lux, Jace, Nidalee, Kog'Ma. Um, and for these Season 2 farmers, there are Karthus, Ori, Anivia, TF, Ryze, Vlad, whatever. So they Season 2 farming champions obviously uh, kind of fell out of the meta. Because assassins kind of destroyed them, but you can still play them, especially because um like ninety nine percent of the viewers that are watching right now, uh kind of focus in solo queue. So oh I'm I'm sure uh, there are a lot more champions that are listed down here, but I'm just uh like I'm just like showing a few examples for you guys. Um, solo, I feel like Season 4 solo queue favors roaming and poking. I mean, it always has, it always has, except for Season 2. So it favors roaming and poking due to lack of communication and coordination between your teammates, in my opinion. So I recommend playing those two styles, but you guys should learn the farming type of champions regardless. So going back to what I was saying about learning the styles, you should learn four champs of one playstyle that you really like, and two of the other two playstyles. So for me, it w I freaking love poking champions. I, I like every single like it, poking's my style. So I, um, so like Lux, Jace, Zareth, Nidalee, uh, just those kind of champions. I I love them. It fits into my playstyle perfectly, and. Little he, Kogma, whatever. I used to play a shit ton of AP Kogma as well. Yes, I have poking fetish apparently. So let's say okay, I'm just some. I just hit gold, whatever. I'm I'm learning how to play. I, I want to learn how to play mid really well because I just switched my lane from whatever to mid, and I want to learn how to play mid. So what you do is you play up. You play a bunch of champions. You play a bunch of champi champions in different uh, styles. So, okay, let's say I play Ari, and I really like Ari's playstyle. Like you, I love roaming and killing bot laners, etc. Or maybe you guys like poking. Like, holy shit, Lux is so fun. They just you just swore somewhere, wait for them to walk in, and just hundred to zero them. I love that. Or maybe you're one of those farming type of uh, player. You just war for your teammates, so your opponent can't roam and do whatever they want and you just have perfect CS and get ridiculously big late game and just solo carry. If I... Uh, hold on one second. Okay, so if I... I'm just... I have a summary of them. I'm gonna talk about roaming a bit, so... I want you guys to listen about all these three playstyles and... Pick one... Uh, you guys, uh, pick one that you think it fits your style. I'm gonna talk about roaming champions and just their pros and cons and basically the summary of it. So roaming pros. It encourages, encourages team and demoralizes enemies if successful. You get a gank off early on onto the enemy team. Their ball lane is gonna shit talk their mid laner is like, oh my god, why didn't you call him? I call blah 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 blah. So they start fighting. It's very effective, moral wise. Uh, it's, very well rounded. Uh, the gold distribution, the gold distribution is very well rounded. So it's not like just one champion get well, one player getting big and forced to carry by themselves, or or uh, just having one player for the enemy to just uh, shut down. Three, uh, 
easily acquire easily acquires objectives after a successful roam. Again, like you kill their bot lane, your jungles. So there's like four people around bottom. You just take dragon for free, tower for free, whatever. It's really easy to take objectives that way yeah, after a successful gank. And it's at, it's favored in the season four meta due to lack of wards placed in solo queue. That's a really big factor. A lot of a lot of supports these days do not fucking get side still for abs absolutely no reason. I have no idea why they're not, but they're, everyone's relying so much on the trinkets that they don't even fucking place. I know you guys. I know a lot of people that are watching this stream are guilty right now because you guys probably don't use trinkets every every uh, time it's available. Because I fucking don't. But or or maybe you guys will uh, not buy wards just because you upgraded your trinket for some reason early on. But yeah, no, it's it's kind of, it's understandable. It's something new, and we're getting used to it. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna talk about cons. <laughs> there are actually quite a few cons. If not coordinated correctly, you may end up wasting time. Make sure you talk to your teammates about enemy wars beforehand. Exclamation mark. Eight of them. I actually I actually put down two of them, but you know, I want to exaggerate a little bit and, and emphasize because if you waste time like that, you're gonna get fucked. Maybe if you uh. If you play the lane out right and you push it really well, you might not, but you're still gonna miss like a wave or two if you don't if you waste too much time. Uh, it gives false sense of strengthness. I don't I don't know how to actually say this. So due to the KDA, use your KDA. Like say like you you kill your bot, like you killed enemy bot lane, and you're mid, and you think you're really you're you think you're the shit because you have. Like, you have double kill and you have all these items, but then once you actually fight your opponent, you die because you're a level or a two levels behind. And their items are almost even because they've been farming a shit ton. Uh... So, make sure that doesn't happen to you. It happened to me a lot when I was learning. Oh, and fighting your opponent is hard due to... Again, I, I kind of already said that, but the level farm, distrib uh, the difference is quite a bit, so it's actually... You're actually not as strong as you would think normally. Of course, you're gonna snowball this way, because uh, if you start farming your lane again, you're gonna be ahead eventually after those ganks. But until you start farming up, you're probably even. Oh, and you can actually be baited by a coordinated counter gank, so make sure you talk to your teammates, like, uh, where's the jungler what last seen? If your jungler's, um, if the jungler hasn't been seen for a really long time, you want to be careful. And talk to your team, again, talk to your teammates, ask them where the wards are, so you're not standing on a war for the, like, good two minutes, and you're like, well, uh, I just wasted two minutes, and now I'm level two levels behind. Hmm. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Also, even if you're level six, you're probably gonna lose to enemy junglers if they see you. So, and if you're not mobile, they might just chase you down with red buff. So you gotta be careful of that too. Uh, conclusion: high risk, high reward. It's a high risk, uh, high reward playstyle. Very, very, very effective in solo queue right now because of lack of wards. Isn't hard to. It, it's um. It's not hard to manipulate lanes, and I'll. Get, I'll uh, talk more about that in a bit. It snowballs really easily, and you become the team's hero because everyone's happy after when they get kills. So there goes that page. I don't need this yet. Page three. Okay. So now I'm gonna talk about poking champions. Let's see. It's uh, and I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons again. They are. It is extremely fun to play, in my opinion. I mean, it may be a little biased, but but it is it is extremely fun to play. It is very effective in solo queue due to lack of uh, oh, lack of wise quick decision making. They don't know how to coordinate against. A lot of people don't know how to coordinate against poke comp or even poking champions. 
That's why I can carry so many games on myself. Like literally by myself as Nidalee. If you guys are just tuning in, it might be a little confusing for you guys, so watch the watch the VOD afterwards. Oh, uh, another pros is that it's fucking annoying to deal with. Catch people out and take objectives for free. Usually good, uh, usually good wave clear after you get a few items and levels. And it destro it fucking destroys their morale. Like it's so goddamn annoying to play against it. Like I, I have bad Italy as well. If I'm not gonna play it, it's so 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 annoying. Um, but of course, like any other playstyle, there are some cons. It uh the this playstyle is usually very vulnerable to hard initiates. So they have Syndra, Malphite, Vi, Varus, and Leona. You don't want to be picking poking champions because you'll get fucked. Um they are extremely usually extremely mana reliant. Nidalee, Jace, Lux, Zareth, Kogma. Even Gragas, because he's a poking champion, they're all, all, oh, Zig, Zig, sorry. They're all extremely mana reliant, so if you get your blue countered like several, several times, you're gonna be useless. Um. Oh, yeah. You got, uh, you must invest heavily on wards and counter wards. Very hard to win a 5v5 team fight head on. Cannot start clear contested objectives without poke beforehand. Teammates must know what their jobs are. They they need to know that they shouldn't engage before they get some poke in. That happens way too fucking often in solo queue. Make sure you tell them they cannot go in before you get the pokes in, because you'll probably lose. Maybe who knows? It is solo queue. Maybe they'll your your enemy team will just derp out and and fuck around and focus all the tanks. But you should let your teammates know, regardless, that you should—they should not go in, because not all the not all of the players will know. You guys will now know uh, not to do that, not to do those. But a lot of league players will not. Oh, <laughs> and you must know how to land skill shots, because they are all skill shots. Conclusion: Very fun to play, annoying to play against, uh, hard to pull off, hard to pull off effectively. And so, uh, I mean, I mean, wait. Oh yeah, yeah, it is hard to pull off uh, effectively in solo queue due to since it requires a lot of coordination. Unless you're really good at the poking champions. Uh, and but they usually have weak laning phase. Oh, did I not talk about the farming champions? I think I did. Oh no, you're right. I think I stopped. So these farming type of champions are Karthus, Oriana, Nivea, Gragas, TF, Ryze, Vlad. They're usually all the champions that can like insta clear a wave, and that are extremely strong late game. Or they they scale really really hard, except Gragas I guess. So okay, going back, that is poking champ poking playstyle, and lastly season two AOE farmer. So, pros. Once learned how to play the playstyle correctly, it is very hard to not get big eventually. Um, and ultimately winning because of your carry, or because you carry your whole goddamn team by yourself. Uh, you get extremely strong late game, usually utility heavy, not, te not as team reliant, hard to shut down. Because uh, they'll eventually just farm up. No, Gragas falls off really hard like game. Cons, very, very boring to play in my opinion. Holy shit, they are boring to play. That's why I cannot learn how to play cards. It's, 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 I'm going to probably kill myself. And it's actually a pretty selfish way to play in my opinion. You must know how to manipulate lanes really well. Again, I actually talked about this, but I'm going to talk about it in a second after I finish this. Uh, you need lots of wards, because you're just going to be farming in your lane the whole time. You're not going to be roaming at all. But you still want to place a lot of wards, so your opponent doesn't roam and just get free kills. Mm. 
and if all lanes feed, there's nothing you can do since you're not gonna have that much effect to your other lanes. And it's very, hmm, it's very unforgiving if you miss your utility spell. So, for example, Anivia Wall, Karthus Wall, Gragas Ult, Orianna Ult. Kinda, kinda hard to fuck a rise, huh? Okay, positioning, I guess. But you get the point. Conclusion doesn't fit the Season 4 meta too well, but they still work really well because they're really strong champions late game regardless. Farm, farm, kill everything. Impatient players shouldn't uh, use play the, or at least like main this playstyle in my opinion. And it requires a lot of mana, I mean <laughs> a lot of gold to be a threat, at least for a while. So how I see it is poking comp, or I mean poking playstyle beats the farming playstyle, and the farming playstyle beats the roaming playstyle, and roaming style, roaming playstyle beats the poking playstyle. I think that's it for this. Mm. Oh shoot, where did it go? Where did the page go? I wanted to talk about the lane manipulation. Um, okay, I'm gonna stutter even more because I don't really prepare for it. But, okay, so you can actually manipulate lanes in a way. What Faker almost always does is that he pulls he pulls his lane so your opponent becomes very susceptible to ganks. He does this by wasting, uh, never using his uh, spells, or at least like trying his best to not use his spells on your creep waves while you're harassing it, your opponent, and only last hitting when you're killing stuff. So it almost always pulls a lane. But at the same time, if it gets pushed way too hard, the lane's gonna eventually even out because of the tower. The tower's gonna kill everything. So eventually it's gonna eventually it's gonna even out. Unless unless you manipulate the lane so that you for example, if there's a huge wave coming to you and you still want it to be a pulling lane, you basically clear all the back line. And it'll still it'll continue pushing to you, because the back lines or actually the front line works as well. You just need to um, control the wave so that it doesn't reset the lane incredibly, uh, incredibly hard. Or back to where it was. Uh, also, if you're a roaming type of champion, you need to. The reason why I said it's not hard to manipulate your lane if you're a roaming roaming champion is because uh, if you want to roam, you just push your lane as hard, as hard as you can, and you just go roam. So it's not as hard, but. The farming champions, you kind of need to know how to manipulate your lanes well, because they're usually extremely weak early on. So it's hard to farm safely if you're getting if you're pushing onto them. But you can also just like completely wave clear it and then just go farm your race or your jungle instead, and go back and get some wards so you can be a bit more aggressive. Say for example, Anivia level six. If you have 200 mana, you can clear your the entire wave in yeah 200 mana I think so you just do that and then go straight to your camp your jungle camps and farm even more manipulating lanes um that's the basic of it and honestly I'm kind of bad at manipulating lanes as well mm, I don't want to bore everyone out so I think I'm just gonna end the lecture bit here and show you guys. I want to talk about, or I want to show you guys the little the effects. Oh yeah, thanks Steve for the RP by the way. Ooh, mystery skin. Let's get some mystery skin. Motherfucker. Okay, I regret everything. Anyways, I'm gonna waste some champions. <clears throat> so we're gonna play one of each champion's playstyle. Let's see. So we got Ari for Rome, Anivia for farming, and Lux for poke. Okay, that's, that's perfect. I don't even have to buy anything. Oh, the reason why Oriana is such a 
such an amazing champion is that she fits into all three pretty much. She can poke, she can roam, she can uh, farm really well. That's why I think Anivia is amazing. Hmm. Before I do that, I kinda want to take a little break, run some ads, and get some more water while I'm in queue. Wait, did I say Anivia? I meant Oriana. Sorry. I am clearly not thinking correctly. I'll be right back. I'm gonna run some ads.